But mm-hmm. if we can educate with with uh, rock your socks bullet points, like 27% of Michiganders are taking opiates, and so those using marijuana is a very small number in comparison, I think that does resonate. Um, and then, you know, some success stories, like we have heard on your show. Uh, I think that goes a long way. I know that, you know, um, there's a staffer that's working with us on this, and she was, you know, pot is bad and we shouldn't be doing anything to bend the rules, and yet over the last six months she has heard these success stories, and she has very much softened her approach. Uh, Rep, so what is it the, is Rep, a matter. Kevin, what's the best way for people to get these stories to their legislators? What is the way that would be most effective for the community to to uh, get this message directly to the, the lawmakers that, that are going to be raising their hand or, or thumbs up or thumbs down on this issue coming up very quickly? Is it those in-person meetings that you have in your office uh, uh, in Lansing itself, or is it through letters? Uh, what vehicle should citizens take in order to get this message out to their elected official? Um, okay, let's talk very candidly. Um, I can't remember the group, Cannabis Unite, I want to say, uh, but they held a rally at the, the Capitol last wait, wait, year. Wait, 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 wait. That would be Michigan. It's okay. We, we just want to give credit where it was the Michigan Medical Marijuana Association and MAC, and, but, but, but they were there, and I know that they were meeting during that period of time, but go ahead. I, I wanted to. It's, well, um, and I don't, I don't want to misspeak, nor do I want to cast, you know, anything, but it was noticed by a lot of legislators that there, you know, it was a school day and there was a lot of kids, and uh, it, it just didn't send the right message is what I'm saying. And a, a huge rally with a bunch of people that, you know, just recreationally smoke pot isn't necessarily going to convey the message. But, but those that are, are receiving, the, you know, your, your most hard-pressed cases, your biggest success stories where, you know, I've had chronic back pain my entire life and now, you know, I can moderate it just with, I, I've been off all those opiates, now I'm moderating it again just with marijuana. Some of those stories, um, yeah, talking personally to your state representative, uh, that'll be a factor. But also uh, knowledgeable attorneys, um, knowledgeable, you, you know, advocates that can articulate the position very well. What I'm saying is some some very targeted uh, powerful statements would work rather than masses and descending. I understand it, and I, and I wanted to. Uh, I'm trying to move on, but you know that, that some of people's frustration on this issue is that the first stroke that the legislature has made is at amending the law rather than at fixing some of the basic compliance measures that we're having. And um, it, I mean, is really it seems that uh, I, I really feel that the Bureau of Health Professions has has a, a better ability to fix any issues that might be going on with physicians than the legislature does, but that the legislature could actually help us with the lack of compliance that we're seeing. And, and, and I, I agree. And I think the conversation is going to tackle this problem, not just legislatively, because I, I've shared with you my frustration in drafting legislation to kind of keep And that doesn't necessarily work. You know, I, I, I want to move on past the, the, the comments about the rally, and I understand how it may have been perceived. Um, but what does one do when they tell you when you're little, if you don't like the law, go out and change it, and then you do, and then you find yourself getting arrested, and everything that the law you thought stood for is not being enforced, the cards are six months late, uh, the new conditions aren't on the registry, and there's no education for law enforcement, and the attorney general is giving records that are supposed to be, you know, private uh, to the federal government. You know, what does one do at that point? I mean, you know, I mean, there's, there's what protest. You know, there there seems to be a lack of civility amongst the legislature in getting the menial job done of getting the cards out on time. I've been talking to the same two women that you have and hear their stories, and I've been at seminars at threat, and they keep telling the same story. There's an inherent message being given by the government to the medical marijuana community that they don't care and they're not taking them seriously. In addition, the attorney general is 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 
is has been misstating the reality of what's going on in the community for whatever reason. I know you know that, but um, if he's the, the litmus test for any legislation that you would propose, then there's a likelihood that it's going to be negative for patients and caregivers. You know, we ask the question all the time: Where's the? Where are those kids? That they're talking about, you know, it's it's a. Uh, I, I mean, I just want to know, you know, I know that it's where everyone's worried about the kids, and I'm worried about the kids, and I don't want any kids using cannabis, and and, and I don't want any doctors who don't know their patients, um, you know, um, certifying people that they're not meeting with and, and examining them them and, and having records. No one in our community wants that, you know, but he, but. Um, and we'll we'll turn those people in because no no one wants that to happen. They're 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 bringing the community down and creating, you know, legislation that's going to make it more difficult to to thrive. You know, the two people that spoke here tonight, the courageous patients, um, they um, they were talking about the Simpson oil, which is a condensed, processed, uh, oily substance after using larger, more quantities than one might lawfully be able to possess to process it down to a amount that's uh, you know that one can ingest for for a treatment. Law enforcement has no concept about this. You know the law speaks about this itself. You know, in terms of the um, statute where it states uh, an amount reasonably necessary to keep an uninterrupted supply to treat the patient's medical condition. You know that's a that's a discussion of uh, that's a discussion of compassion. That's a discussion of you know understanding the patient and understanding the challenges of you know finding the right method of ingestion and the right um, you know, I I I I wish that uh, you know these those across the aisle from you were uh, more attentive to some of these concerns because the idea that uh, you know that uh, that the community has been treated properly on this has been a little bit uh, disheartening. Uh, but I I, I don't want to keep I don't want to uh, argue with it. I, and I appreciate you hearing us out on all of this. Um, well, a, I, a point that I'd like to make once again I'm a freshman. And there's been a lot of changes in a lot of different laws this past year. And I remember very vividly when 10,000 uh, union um, representatives, people in the union, came uh, because we were voting on restricting collective bargaining. And the vote was cast when people were chanting outside, and you could hear it. It was deafening inside. Uh, and yet, a vast majority of that body, 100% of the Republicans, cast their vote. Um, I, I think that they have an agenda here. So I see my role, because these bills did roll out, I signed on to one in order to be part of the conversation. And like I said, I am the only Democrat uh, in these rooms, and these decisions will be made by Republicans to just give some moderation and compromise to this. Understood. The best I hear you. Is education. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you more bullet points than you've ever thought of. In your, in, <laughs> is that okay? Can we give you that? And we're going to get, get you testimonies of patients after patients that are being harmed by the current way things are being handled. And 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 uh, we'd like to do that for you and make it as easy as, as it can in the education process. Is that okay? Well, I can tell you that there will be a big push uh, to get Laura to – issue these licenses timely because we do realize a lot of it, maybe not a lot, but a good uh, amount of these problems, if if Lara was doing their job, then there wouldn't be these problems. Um, another is to somehow change, you know, the whole conversation because uh, I have heard about the horror stories of, of people having their door kicked in and having to defend themselves in court and I don't think there's anyone that, you know, is, uh, knows about the legislation and has read it that can say that was the intent on any basis. It's written right in there that this should lower arrests by 95 or 99 percent. That's yes. exactly right. And it did the opposite. Right. You know, uh, a very valuable tool, I would think, in switching the discussion to one of public health rather than public safety would be to – implement the new condition boards that immediately starts the conversation about other conditions that have been successfully treated with cannabis within the state and it really switches it back to a medical focus 
by force almost. There's been a couple hundred applications submitted at least that have just gone ignored. That the process has not ever been implemented. As a lawyer, as a lawyer, there you know you, you recognize it's a complete violation of the statute itself. For more than two years, it would be a great thing to champion to to move that conversation back that direction. I I, I like the strategy aspect of what you're saying, and I am very uh, I, I realize that, and I think that uh, my counterpart Ken Horn does also. Um, it, it is completely ignored, and there is no legal basis for it. So there will be legislative pressures on the administration to get this moving. And like I have pointed out, it's not a priority uh, to Schneider. So if we can keep the 